here, well, and then we'll open to questions. Yes, well, a very short word. I'm not sure I'm going to add much on, on this agreement, but, uh, you know, if the only way I would answer to, to what, uh, to, to the interesting comments from, from Walter, if the only way to make sense of everything we believe is to find a principle which is based on a contradiction, on the one hand, and which on the other hand is so vague that it doesn't help us solve any practical issues, well, I would say there is a problem with our beliefs. Um, and I would argue that we have, in order to make sense of our belief, to find some other principle or principles or ideas which are different from this uh, general uh, principle which is based on a contradiction and, and, so, and so general that it doesn't say anything. And, uh, you know, in a very real way, we are at sea without a rudder. You know, these things are complicated. And again, they've been debated for 25 uh, hundreds of years. So we are at sea with uh, actually a very small and incomplete and uh, far from totally efficient rudder, which is to eliminate error. You know, to try to find the errors and, uh, and eliminate them one by one. Um, and by identifying more what is not conducive to individual liberty than to identifying what is what are the foundations of individual liberty. Pierre, you, you oppose rent control. Why? I oppose what? Rent control. But I assume you oppose rent control laws that say I can't charge more for my, my house than the, the law says. Why? If not because of the non-aggression principle on homesteading. I oppose it because I think that contractual freedom is a general idea that helps most people in society have the widest opportunities. And, uh, and interfering in, uh, in, in, in any price, including rent, uh, is a violation of this, uh, of this uh, general idea. So that's the only reason. So we, yes. But Pierre, that'll be because rent is a voluntary agreement, right? Sure, yes, yeah. contractual freedom. And, that's, but that's, 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 that's the point. I mean, that gets us back to the agreed point that the individual is fundamentally to be making his own rules about his own life. And so when he agrees with somebody else about something that pertains to only what they have, and I believe on the homesteading uh, principle again, uh, fundamentally, then we that's the foundation of that. Yes, I agree with this. If I can just finish my, my, little, my little point, this time by criticizing uh, uh, Jan, if I, if, I, if I have to be contrary, and I think that what Jan said, that's what actually you don't have to be. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it's very interesting. Uh, the problem I see with contractualism, you know, contractualism is very close to the usual way an economist would look at the political world, which is let's just agree on something that's mutually uh, agreeable, which is why contractualism is such an important part of public choice theory and economics. Um, the problem is finding unanimity. It's very difficult to find unanimity. Jan seems to have a nice way to solve this problem, which is let's just shoot first everybody who is not going to be unanimous, and then of course we are going, we are going, you know, after we shoot the first person, and if, and if it doesn't work, still we shoot the second one, and then you end up with three persons who agree. So, uh, you know, perhaps we have to uh, we have to abandon this idea of unanimity uh, because it's. But don't be too cavalier about this now. Perhaps. <laughs> okay, but uh, you know, I'm. My mind is not really made on this. On this. On this. Well, topic. but I mean, the peace for almost everybody. Peace actually is better than war, and the people who claim it's not are inviting war. But you know, there's nothing more to be said about them except let's do our best to beat them at the war in question because there's nothing else you can do. Those who insist on fighting, you have to fight. There is no way around it. Well, of course, you can lie down and let them walk all over you. Okay, but not very many people want to do that either. Now, about all the rest of us, what are we going to agree on? Is there anything Is there anything that we can all agree on? Here my claim is the liberty principle is the only plausible candidate for what we can all agree on. Why? Because the liberty principle says you're only restricted in not doing things that um, uh, damage my life, my property, you know, my property. I mean, we have the... the the uh, homesteading non-aggression combination is spelled out properly. Uh, and what it says is, uh, you are not to do things which um, make me worse off in those respects. That's the only restriction there is. Now, if you ask for anything more, then the trouble is it's going to cost somebody more 
than he would be rationally willing to pay. For example, let's take welfare rights. And we say, well, you know, wouldn't we all benefit from welfare rights? But the answer is, no, we wouldn't. Because there will be some people who don't need the rights in question. I mean, they are very capable, et cetera, et cetera. They can make arrangements with voluntary others that will take care of them just fine. And beyond that, the cost will be more than they would be willing to pay. Now, the people who benefit from it, of course, would always be in favor of that, but the people who pay would not, and so we don't have unanimity. We do have unanimity, though, in the non-harm, or the non-violation of, uh, um, of uh, my uh, intrinsic uh, liberty is concerned. I mean, that's something that we all agree on. Nobody wants to be, in that relevant sense, harmed. Whereas uh, only some people uh, uh, want to put up with a rule that would require them to pay, you know, um, require them to support other people in certain respects. Lots of us are nice guys and we're willing to do this, but some aren't. And many are nice guys but have other things to do and they've got their own priorities. And you're invading those priorities if you, if you insist on uh, some kind of a welfare principle. Um, by the way, I, I note that uh, whenever you talk with a welfareist, you discover an interesting thing, and that is they're in favor of coercively reinforcing welfare rights on everybody who lives inside of this line, for example, your fellow Canadians. As soon as you say, wait a minute, if you're claiming that welfare is a human right, why isn't Canada responsible for the welfare of Indians, Chinese, and all the other six billion people outside of this line? And then they're very embarrassed. But of course, if they're going to say, well, it's a, it's a human right if you're a Canadian, comma, to welfare, then that looks pretty funny. <laughs> because Canadian isn't universal. It's a little tiny, I mean, it's a great big area, but it's a little tiny bunch of people inside the entire globe. And they're humans too, the people inside this way. Why don't they get them if it's a human right? Why should human rights have national boundaries built into them? This is a question that people like that are going to have a very difficult time uh, answering. Whereas there's no problem, that, notice how easy it is to live up to the libertarian principle in principle. Because these are all what we in the trade now call negative rights. A negative right means a right that you not do things to me. It's not a right that you do things to me, but only a right that you not do things to me. Now at this particular moment, consider how we are at this very moment uh, respecting the negative rights of everybody in the entire world by not murdering them. And it doesn't cost us anything. <laughs> right? Whereas welfare rights do cost something. We've got seven billion people out there. If we were supposed to be responsible for their, their, their uh, welfare, to some, even to some very minor degree, we would all be working 24 hours a day. Clearly there's a big, big difference between uh, the positive and the negative forms of any rights. And the negative ones have this wonderful potential for universality, right? whereas positive ones do not. They impose costs, and there are going to be people on whom those costs uh, will be, from their point of view, excessive. And their point of view, as I point out, is what matters fundamentally. Okay, Walter wants to click back, and then you're on. <laughs> <laughs> I, promise. I uh, strongly disagree with Jan on, on this uh, business of uh, uh, contract. Uh, I, I think it's almost grotesque to say that we all agree on, on rights, and we live in a welfare state, and we live in, uh, in a war, uh, people are killing each other, and I, I just, it seems grotesque to me. Uh, I now say it's all right to kill. Jan says he has a right to kill me for that. My question is, in saying it's all right to kill, did I violate the non-aggression principle? And my answer is no, I didn't. Now, I didn't threaten. You see, the, the key is it's force or fraud or the threat thereof. Did I threaten anyone? No. I just said it's okay to kill. I don't believe it, but I'm, I'm just taking that view. It's okay to kill. Hobbes, uh, Hobbes in jungle is fine. I didn't threaten anyone. I didn't use violence. I didn't take anyone's property. Jan says he has a right to kill me. He's not a libertarian on this issue because he has no right to kill me. Just because I said that stupid thing. 